to another Bible study with the Feed My Sheep Foundation video channel. Today we're going to do on this video a continuation of our Bible study. We started with uh, Second Chronicles and we have chapter 24 today we're going to study and it begins with uh, Joash. Joash is the son of uh, Zechariah, no, Zechariah, <coughs> son of, uh, he's not the son of Zechariah, Zechariah is his brother, he is in the genealogy, I should say, the same, they're in the same genealogy, Joash and, um, Joash and Zechariah, but Joash is, uh, the next king to reign to rule, uh, over, uh, Judah, because again, we're looking at all the kings that reigned and ruled over Judah as we study uh, Second Chronicles and the genealogy of David and Solomon and their reign and their rulership as they uh, were kings over uh, the tribe of Judah and that in this particular season and in this instance. So Joash is the next one to come into office, and he begins to reign, and it starts with Joash was seven years old. He was seven years old. He was just a child when he began to reign, and he reigned 40 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Zibia of Beersheba, and Joash, he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. Okay. And all the days of Jehoda the priest. So at the time Joash was reigning and ruling as king, Jehoda was the priest. Okay, so and Jehoda took for him two wives, and he he had two sons, or he had some sons and and daughters. And it came to pass after this that Joash uh, was minded to repair the house of the Lord. So Joash it came up in his spirit and up in his to his mind. For him to start to rebuild the house of the Lord. And so he uh, gathered together the priests and the Levites and said to them, Go out unto the cities of Judah and gather all the Israel money and repair the house of the Lord. For year to year, and see that he hastened the matter, howbeit the Levites hastened to do it. Okay, they hastened it not. And the king called for Jehovah the chief and said to him, Why hast thou not required of the Levites to bring in out of Judah and out of Jerusalem the collection according to the commandment of Moses, the servant of the Lord, and of the congregation of Israel for the tabernacle of witness? So he's um, questioning his rulership. For the sons of Athaliah, that wicked woman, had broken up the house of God, and also all the dedication the dedicated and dedication things of the house of the Lord did, uh, did they bestow upon Balaam. So here we have, this is the reason why the house of the Lord is broken up, because of Athaliah. And Athaliah, we talked about her in the previous chapters. Now she, Athaliah, uh, she was the mother of Ahaziah. Okay, and then Ahaziah was the son of Jehoram. Jehoram was the son of Jehoshaphat. Okay, and Asa was uh, Jehoshaphat's dad. And so as we look at um, Joaz, Joaz is the son of Ahaziah. He comes next behind him to reign and to rule. And But Athaliah, again, we want to, just because we're taking note of her in this verse right here, she's the one who... Uh, ruined the house of the Lord because her son Ahaziah had got killed and she was mad about that. And that was in the previous chapter. I believe that was uh, chapter 23. But there was something that he did also too that put him in that position. And with the, his mother, Athalia, was very mad and so she began to tear up the house of the Lord and just, she killed a lot of the uh, 
a lot of different people and then she ended up dying from a horrible death also at the end of that chapter 23 23 22 one of them but in the previous chapters we did go over at the Lord. and her behavior because here yeah 23 23 13 is where she then at the Lord tore off her clothes and said treason treason she was lying there so she did a lot of manipulative, deceitful things, sort of like the spirit of Jezebel she had. So, okay, let me get back to Second Chronicles, and we're on uh, verse 8. At the king's commandment, they made a chest and set it without at the gate of the house of the Lord. So they began to go forward, building the house of the Lord. They made a proclamation through Judah and Jerusalem to bring in to the Lord the collection that Moses, the servant of God, laid upon Israel in the wilderness. And all the princes and all the people rejoiced, and they brought in and cast into the chest until they had made an end. Okay, so they gave until they gave until they gave to rebuild this house of the Lord for God Almighty. <clears throat> and so, uh, and all the princes and all the people rejoiced, and they brought in and cast into chests until they had made an end. And now it came to pass that at what time the chest was brought unto the king's office by the hand of the Levites, and when they saw that there was much money, the king's scribe and the high priest officers came in and emptied the chest, and they took it, carried it to his place again, and thus they did day by day in gathering the money in abundance. And the king and Jehoda gave it to such as did the work of the service of the house of the Lord, so they paid them for doing a house of the Lord and rebuilding they hired masons, carpenters to repair the house of the Lord, also such as wrought iron and brass to mend the house of the Lord. So the workmen wrought, and uh, the work was perfect by them, and they set the house of God in its state and strengthened it. So they were putting together, putting the house of the Lord back together from where this woman, Athaliah, Jesse Bill's spirit, had torn it down. Now this is the same house that uh, Solomon had put all his uh, money and silver and gold and uh, talents and gifts in preparing this for the house of, for, for the Lord so he goes on to uh, verse 14 and when they had finished it they brought the rest of the money before the king and Jehoda whereof were made vessels for the house of the Lord even vessels to minister and to other with all and spoons and vessels of gold and silver and they offered burnt offerings in the house of the Lord continually all the day of Jehoda. But Jehoda waxed old, and he was full of days when he died. And he, hung, he was a hundred and thirty years old. And uh, when he when he when he when he died, they buried him in the city of David among the kings, because he had done good in Israel, both toward God and toward his house. So he did sort of like David. And Solomon, King Solomon, they did, you know, right before the Lord in building the house, not tearing it down, not destroying it for the people. And so he says, uh, and they buried him in the city of David among the kings. It says, now uh, after the death of Jehovah came the princes of Judah, and they made, uh, but they made themselves bow down to the king, and the king hearkened to them. And they left the house of the Lord God of their fathers and served groves and idols. And wrath came upon Judah and Jerusalem for this. Okay, so it was a trespass against the Lord. So the Lord began to pour out his wrath upon them because they began to serve idols. Okay, so he sent prophets to them to bring them again unto the Lord. And they testified against them, but they would not give ear. So they wouldn't listen even though prophets were sent unto them. And this is another thing to take notice of, how God will send prophets in the mix of his people to let them know at a time whenever they are doing something he doesn't want them to be doing. He wants them to change because he doesn't want, he does not want to pour out. He does not. He does not want to pour out his word. Wrath, he does not want to release wrath upon his kingdom, he, upon his people, upon his inherited people. But however, 
we know from uh, even reading the Old Testament many times that he did because they continually, continually, continually rebelled against him. And so therefore his wrath was poured out. And there's always a reason why God doesn't want uh, us to rebel against him. And up number one, of course, no doubt is for our own benefit. Because God knows and can see everything and know that the enemy is behind everything evil. And he doesn't want us to partake in that because we become evil if we do. Okay, and um, that's a whole nother video. And I am going to do one as the Holy Spirit leads and guide me so that we can um, begin to be more at one and walk more in agreement with God, you know. It's one thing to agree with this word, yeah, believe in it, yeah, it's, you know, but I, you know, but then the person does not submit to it, stand on it, the whole entire thing that he says, okay, because you can't just pick and choose, you know, what to stand on or what not to stand on, but the truth of the matter is being able to, first and foremost, really have a great and better, good understanding of who God is. His, you know, what he desires from the throne room uh, of his people, of his saints in the earth, and staying on that same page, you know, staying on that same page where we are uh, reverencing God and honoring him the way he wants to be reverenced and honored. Okay, so um, getting back on point here with Second Chronicles chapter 24. Uh, let me see, where are we? prophets okay so he sent prophets to them to bring them again unto the Lord to, and um, you know to turn them back in the right direction and like I said that's a great uh, verse to take notice to how in the mix of rebellion God always sends the spirit in to pull those back to him so the spirit of God came upon Zechariah the son of Jehoda the priest so Zechariah we see here is, was the son of of Jehoda, son of a priest, which stood above the people and said to them, Thus says God, Why transgress ye the commandments of the Lord that you cannot prosper? Because you have forsaken the Lord, he has for also forsaken you. So see here what he tells them. They have transgressed the Lord in doing what they have done. Okay? And therefore, even in God sending a uh, in their rebellion sends a prophet unto them to speak to them you know about their behavior and what they're doing and uh, then Zacharias you know says what he says to them regarding the trespass and then it goes on and they conspired against him and stoned him with stones <laughs> at the commandment of the king in the court of the house of the Lord. So this is how rebellious and how once an uh, individual steps off into rebellion, they don't want to hear what the Lord has to say regarding their behavior. And that's exactly what's taking place right here in this, uh, in this chapter. So... They conspired against him, and they threw stones. And then it says, "Thus Joash the king remembered not the kindness which his, uh, which Jehoda his father had done to him, but slew his son. And when he died, he said, The Lord look upon it and require it. And it came to pass at the end of the year that the host of Syria came up against him, and they came to Judah and Jerusalem and destroyed all the princes of the people from among the people and sent all the spoil of them unto the king of Damascus. So you see here, because what Joash king, he remembered, he didn't remember how good the priest was to the house of Judah, okay, as he began to reign and rule over them. But he killed his son Zechariah because of what he came and said in the mix of the people regarding their trespass. So, therefore, when he did that, God raised up and were allowed, as we can see here, Syria came up against him and destroyed, and they came 
to Judah and Jerusalem and destroyed all the princes of the people. Okay? For the army of the... I'm going down to verse 24. It says, The army of the Syrians came with a small company of men, and the Lord delivered a great, a very great host into their hand, because they had forsaken the Lord, the Lord God of their fathers. So they executed judgment against Joash. Okay, so therefore, even though Joash reigned as king over the house of Israel, but when he forsook the prophet, when the prophet came with the message, with the word, with the spirit of the Lord, to uh, remind them, to forewarn them that what they were doing wasn't right and that they needed to change, instead of them changing and Joash leading the people to change, to see that they needed to make a change, he decided to go against the spirit of the Lord, which was the prophet Zechariah coming in and telling them what needed to be done. He decided to go against them and kill him. Okay, so that is why God ordered the judgment against them, against Joash. Okay, and then it says, and when they were departed from him, for they left him in great diseases. Okay, his own servants conspired against him for the blood of the sons of Jehovah, because he had killed the priest's sons, and that's a big no-no. And slew him on his bed, and he died. And they buried him in the city of David, but they buried him not in the subtries with the kings. Okay, so even when he went to death, he wasn't even buried with the kings. And notice how those kings that didn't do right by the Lord, they were not buried with the same Solomon and David. If they didn't clean their act up before they fell into, you know, before God placed judgment on them, because that's the thing between God and uh, the saints of God, you know. Because, you know, as we can see, Joash was in the kingdom, okay? He was a part of the inherited people, but he died of a horrible death. God even um, arranged for those to come up against him because of the acts that he did toward other people that were in the kingdom. And that's a good thing to take note of, too, here regarding, uh, you know, just kingdom citizenship and brotherhood and brotherly love. Okay, so, so it tells us here he left him. He had great diseases. His own servants conspired against him, and this was all for the blood of the sons of Jehovah the priest, and slew him on his bed, and he died. And they buried him in the city of David, but they buried him not with the kings. And these are they that conspired against him, Zabad, the sons of Shemeth, the Ammonites, and Jehozabad, the son of Shemeth, a Moabitess. So those are the people that began, uh, that did conspire against him. And it says, Now concerning his sons and the greatness of the burdens laid upon him, and the repairing of the house of God, behold, they are written in the story of the book of the kings, and Amaziah, his son, reigned after him. Okay? So his son, Amaziah, came up next. And we're all, this is all in the genealogy of David, all from the um, bloodline of Solomon. And we can take a look at that in First Chronicles chapter 3. And we can see all the sons, chapter 3, all the sons of David and all the, the different ones that reigned in the kingdom through the genealogy of David. And as we can see, this the next one, Joash. Joash here, if we're in 1 Chronicles chapter 3, Joash is listed. Oh, let's see here. Where is he at? He's here in chapter 3, verse 11. Joram, his son, and Ahaziah, his son, and Joash, his son. We see Joash, the son of Ahaziah. And then we see Amaziah, his son. So we see Amaziah, the son, coming up next. And as we look back, we can see Jehoshaphat. Uh, Jehoshaphat, Joram, uh, Reho Solomon's son was Rehoboam, Rehoboam. We see him, we see Asa, uh, we see all of the individuals that have reigned and ruled in Judah under the genealogy of David and Solomon in their generation from the tribe of Judah. Okay, so that is going to take us to the end of this Bible study, chapter 24, Second Chronicles. God bless you, and I will see you on our very next Bible study as we continue to go forward studying the Word of God.